Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. May God bless you all. We breathe cheerfulness, joy, happiness, excitement, because we are here in a great blessing. Amen, brothers and sisters. Cordial welcome, Sister Mary Luisa, here to the city of Montreal. Glory to our God. Here we are, sister, gathered, all brothers and sisters from the province of Quebec. We also have brothers and sisters who are visiting us from the city of Vancouver, visiting us from the city of Edmonton, Calgary. We uh, Those are in the province of Quebec. Visiting us from the city of Drummondville. I would like brothers and sisters from Drummondville to rise. Welcome brothers and sisters from Drummondville to the Bible study. Brothers and sisters from Santia Sant, welcome brothers and sisters. We greet you with a great deal of affection. Where are the brothers and sisters from Gatineau? We greet you with great affection. Also, brothers and sisters from Gatineau, welcome. Our brothers and sisters from Granby. Where are our brothers and sisters from Granby? Welcome, brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters from Three Rivers. Where are our brothers and sisters from Three Rivers? Welcome, brothers and sisters. Are our brothers and sisters from Sherbrooke? Our brothers and sisters from Sherbrooke, here we are. Brothers and sisters, welcome. Brothers and sisters from the city of Quebec. Where are our brothers and sisters from the city of Quebec? There they are, our brothers and sisters. Welcome, brothers and sisters. Where are the brothers and sisters from Montreal? Brothers and sisters from Montreal? There they are, all brothers and sisters from Montreal. All of Montreal, which is North Montreal, South Rick, West Montreal, and St. Jerome. Welcome, all of you. And now I ask you, where is the people of God? Where are the children of God? Let us rise, brothers and sisters, and let us begin at this time our Bible study. And let us open up our Bibles, brothers and sisters, in the book of Daniel. We are going to open the Bible in the book of Daniel, very happy, very excited, knowing that God is in our midst. Let us meditate in that which the Lord spoke to Daniel, that he wants us all to also understand and put into practice, which is to have a willing heart for our God. Chapter 10, the book of Daniel, starting in verse 1, brothers and sisters, through verse 12, let us read with all our hearts, understanding, let us meditate in each word so that we may understand this beautiful experience which Daniel lived, Daniel chapter 10, verse number 1. The book of Daniel, Old Testament, after Ezekiel and before Hosea, we find Daniel chapter 10, verse number 1. Are we all there, brothers and sisters? Let us read alternately. I will read the first verse. You will read the second through verse number 12. We will read to exalt and magnify the name of our God. Verse number 1. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a message was revealed to Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar. The message was true, but the appointed time was long, and he understood the message and had understanding of the vision. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. Verse number three. I ate no pleasant food, no meat or wine came into my mouth, nor did I anoint myself at all till the three whole weeks were fulfilled. Now on the twenty-fourth day of the first month, as I was by the side of the great river, that is, the Tigris, I lived in my eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose waist was girded with gold of uvas. His body was like beryl, his face like the appearance of lightning, his eyes like torches of fire, his arms and feet like burnished bronze in color, and the sound of his words like the voice of a multitude. Verse 7, And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision. For the men who were with me did not see the vision, 
but a great terror fell upon them, so that they fled to hide themselves. Therefore I was left alone when I saw this great vision, and no strength remained in me, for my vigor was turned to frailty in me, and I retained no strength. Yet I heard the sound of his words, and while I heard the sound of his voice, I was in a deep sleep on my face, with my face to the ground. Suddenly a hand touched me, which made me tremble on my knees and on the palms of my hands. And he said to me, O oh, Daniel, main greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak to you, and stand up, for I have now been sent to you. While he was speaking his word, this word to me, I stood trembling. Then he said to me, Do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your, your words were heard, and I have come because of your words. The glory and honor be always to the Lord. You may take your seats, brothers and sisters. What a beautiful reading is in this, right, brothers and sisters? A beautiful experience which Daniel lived when this man clothed in linen present, appeared before Daniel and said, Daniel, from the first moment you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard. What a, how beautiful for God to tell you this to us, amen? So very gladly, let us sing the first hymn this afternoon. Let us sing hymn number 235. It is titled, Nearer My God to Thee. Let us sing, brothers and sisters, with all our heart, longing in our souls, this beautiful blessing to feel God very near to our lives, because we are feeling God, because God is in our midst. Glory to the Lord. Let us sing hymn number 235, Nearer My God to Thee. Yes, Lord, our souls will rejoice near to you because we feel your presence, because you guide us, because you are very near your people, so close that you are in our minds and our hearts, which is why we give you the glory. Blessed is the name of the Lord. Let us rise, brothers and sisters. Let us sing to our God. 
choruses of joy and let us sing first brothers and sisters Salon chante aujourd'hui avec tout notre cœur les cantiques numéro 175 je sais que tu es ici seigneur Let us sing brothers and sisters let us rise with all our hearts in french on the screens we will play the lyrics of the chorus for all the church to sing to the Lord in French. And if you don't know French, you will sing because you will learn French today, singing to our God, the glory be to the Lord, because how beautiful it is to sing to the Lord. For God, there are no languages. What God is looking at is your heart. And God is here looking, not whether we speak Spanish, French, or English. Here we speak the language of loving God, of following His path. Glory to our God, which is why, let us sing. Chorus 172, I know that you are here. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to this great gift to enjoy a Bible study live with our sister, Mary Luisa. The glory be to the Lord. Amen. Blessed is the name of our God. Amen. We're happy and joyful. Amen, brothers and sisters. Amen. Brothers and sisters, the most precious moment, the one we longed for the most, I leave you in the company of the person we love so much, our sister Mary Luisa. Welcome, sister Mary Luisa, to Canada, Montreal. God bless you. God bless you all, brothers and sisters. Good evening, my beloved brothers and sisters from different places around the world, not only here in Canada. A very affectionate greeting to you all. A special greeting for all the brothers and sisters, all of those that are Canadian, those that are from other countries. I know that you are here. And I simply want to say to you that for the Lord, it does not exist languages, race, color. <clears throat> for the Lord, this does not exist. Not your color, your race but your heart, a heart that loves him, a heart that has been willing for God, a heart that has fallen in love with the Lord. The Lord has chosen us to be the voice, to go around the world, to proclaim, to present his word. So all of you, have a task. Each one of you has a calling. And the Lord has chosen you and has brought you and you're in congregation here in this spiritual, invisible place, your church. 
so that we may serve him and that we can fulfill that mission of evangelization of speaking to the people, whoever they might be, to speak to them that God exists. You may be seated. We joyful and happy, we're going to be reading in Psalm 57 to see what the Lord Jesus Christ, Psalm 57, the Lord Jesus Christ is speaking of those that persecute him, speaking of the enemies, the Lord is speaking to our God, the Father. But the Lord Jesus is not so much of himself, but of his church. Let us remember, brothers and sisters, that Jesus Christ always has been our mediator. He presents himself to the Father for us because he knows that we do not have the words to say or speak to God. We do not have that capacity to be able to present ourselves before the Lord in what truly we want. So the Lord Jesus Christ, he presents before the Father and speaks for us. What we feel he expresses, he transmits it to our Father, and he speaks for us as if he is the same Lord whom had suffered the sin, whom had sinned, who had done what was wrong. The Lord speaks for us. There is a psalm that says, In sin my mother formed me, in sin I was conceived, and in sin I was born. The people say, but how is it that the Lord Jesus Christ was conceived under sin? Because his mother was with sin. The Lord Jesus Christ was holy. But since the Lord was speaking for us, that we truly would feel in those moments. We are the ones that felt these moments of sin, of deceit, of ignorance, and that we did not know what to do, but to do what others did things that were inappropriate, that we did perhaps, and we were so ignorant. In this way, we were born. In this way, we were raised or grew up. And the Lord was attentive to rescue us and to cleanse us and to forget that past. And this is why the Lord in the psalm said, in sin, I was conceived. This is what the psalms speak of. That apparently is the bio of the Lord. Apparently, the psalms are prayers of our Lord Jesus Christ that he said to the Father because he suffered as a human being. But as he said, I will be as a human being and I will be as them, suffering as them. I will suffer as they did. And this is why the people become confused when they read the Psalms because they do not know, is it the Lord that is speaking or is it the Lord speaking for the people or is it that the Lord did live this? Perhaps all of these things can happen. This is why we are going to be analyzing wisely or with intelligence. Analyzing and then taking this word to our heart. And to learn as well the way in which we should pray. The manner in which we should worship the Lord. And as well to learn what is it that pleases the Lord. Because this is why we analyze and study the Bible. To be able to have many strategies to be closer to the Lord. So that the Lord as well may hear us. And in Psalm 57, be merciful to me, O God. Be merciful to me. The Lord Jesus Christ said this. He says to the Father to be merciful with him. But... Is it that the Lord Jesus Christ was committing so many sins that the Lord needed to be merciful? No, but we do. His people, yes, his believers, they were failing before the Lord. We were failing before God. And this is why the Lord said, be merciful of me, of me, that I am part of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. So it says, be merciful of me, 
because my soul trusts in you and in the shadow of your wings, I will make my refuge. You. Refuge, how beautiful. Until what? Until these calamities have passed. Until the evil day has gone. Until the sadness, the bitterness, the illness. Until the needs physically, the lacking. Have mercy of me, O oh God. I trust in you. Until the evil day has passed and you extend your hand and you bless me. The Lord Jesus Christ did not need this, but we, his church did, his believers, his followers, they did need. And in verse number two, I will cry out to God most high, to God who performs all things for me, to God who blesses me, to God who gives me many goods, Many blessings with me to this God. To this God, I will cry out because he will be there at my side to help me. Verse three, please read verse three. Those that can see, because I know the light's a little dark. Those that can see, please read. He shall send from heaven and save me. He reproaches the one who would swallow me up. God shall send forth his mercy and his truth. Because why are we not going to trust? We should trust. Because he shall send our Lord. He will send from heaven. And he will save us. He will help us. He will strengthen us. He will guard us. He will protect us. It says... He that reproaches me, who is this? Our enemy. This enemy, invisible. The one that is there in all moments, looking to see who he's going to harm, to see who he's going to destroy, who he places an illness upon, that enemy. That he is there constantly. It says, he reproaches the one who sh would swallow me up. And God shall send forth his mercy and his truth. He is going to strengthen us. He's going to help us. He is going to extend his hand and help us so that we can be saved from the persecution of our enemy. But so that we can win that benefit from God, we as well have to have our heart simply to love him. To love our Lord. To serve our Lord. There are persons that say, how difficult it is to follow in this path. This path is too hard. I'm not capable of following it. I think, why? Why do the people or that person say that it's so difficult and they're not capable of following the path because they say it's too hard? To me, it seems so simple because the first step is to love the Lord, to love him. After I love him and I say, Lord, I want to be willing for you. Help me. And the Lord comes to help us. So then the Lord removes the tendencies, negative that might be in us. So where is this is difficult? What I sometimes think of the people is they better yet have their own self-will and stubborn and rebellious, hard-headed. And this does not allow them to reason. And they see things difficult in the path of God. This is why in our prayers, let us say to the Lord, Lord, give me humility. Allow me, Lord, to be someone that is gentle, humble, simple in my heart. Because with this, I can say to you, O oh Lord, that I'm willing in my heart for you and that you will help me. Help me so that this path will be simple, easy, that I not say it's too hard to follow God. Because you are going to help me. Because you are going to see my heart and you will help me. This in our prayers, in our petitions, we should always say to the Lord these things. Let us continue reading verse four. 
reads, my soul is among lions. Again, the dangers, again, the sufferings, the persecution. The lions are demons. The evil that comes against us. A lie among the sons of men who are set on fire. Means persons that are evil, whose teeth are spears and arrows and their tongue a sharp sword. If we're going to say that our Lord Jesus Christ lived this, we say he did. Because when he was on the earth preaching, those people, those Israelites persecuted him, his own people. They were his enemies. They slandered. They spoke blasphemy against the word of the Lord. They spoke lies. They persecuted him, just as the verse says. But the Lord said to the disciples, what do you expect in the future? Simply preach, teach the gospel. But remember that if he, the father, they persecuted, they as well will do the children. The father is our Lord Jesus Christ. He was persecuted, persecuted by the enemy. Meaning this enemy used his brothers, the Jews, during that time. And they persecuted the Lord. So therefore, his church or his believers, which are the children of the Lord, the believers in Christ, is the church, or as well, the children of the Lord. They as well shall be persecuted. We shall be persecuted in one way or another by this enemy. And how is the persecution? Many ways. So today we see and we hear that people are kidnapped and hurt. People are robbed. There's illnesses, incurable diseases, accidents. We hear about persons that are kidnapped, people that are missing, all these things. Economical crisis, lack of employment, homeless. We hear all these things. Well, all of this, all of these elements, this is how the enemy persecutes. There we see he that persecutes continuously, placing misunderstandings in the household, divisions in the marriage, children, discord, arguments, separations, divorce, There it is, the persecution of this enemy against the church of the Lord, against the children of God. Just as they persecuted our Lord Jesus Christ, these demons, these that say that they were like lions, in this same way, the children of the Lord, we and shall be victims of the persecution of the enemy. But let us not be saddened by this, by these that persecute or this enemy that is there consistently against us. Because as well, we have this Lord and this Father of ours. Because if Jesus Christ give us a, gives us this example, saying, be merciful to me, O God, be merciful. Because you will give me the triumph, it says. You will give me refuge. You will, in the shadow of your wings, until the calamity has passed, until the situation goes by, you will be there. Because as well, in the midst of that persecution, which we are victims of, we have someone who is hearing us. And as well, who saves us, guards us, protects us. But we as well have to give him what he deserves. And we have to separate from sin. Because if we do not separate from sin, then the Lord cannot help us and allows that he that persecutes does harm. We have to separate from doing what is wrong. But here we have our Lord and we have our prayers, which are very powerful before our Lord. Verse five, please read. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be above all the earth. Here come the words of worship for our Lord. 
in the midst of the prayer, in the midst of the petition that I make before the Lord, in the midst of my my thoughts, there comes the praise. Be exalted, O God. Be exalted above the heavens, above all the earth. Let there be your glory. Thanks be to the Lord, because you have heard my prayer. And he that persecutes me has done evil, but you have guarded me. You have protected me. You have healed me. You have raised me up. So you are great, O Lord. You are just, and your mercy is forevermore. Let us continue with six. They have prepared a net for my steps. He, those that persecute, my soul is bowed down. They have dug a pit before me. Into the midst of it, they themselves have fallen. This is true. The Lord Jesus Christ, they set many traps and many evil things they did against him, but they as well suffered the consequences of all that they wanted to do. But to us as well. He that persecutes us, our enemy, the devil, has been using a well many ways to come against the children of God. And it says that the, the pit they as well fall in because the enemy uses human beings, uses circumstances, uses things, situations, all he uses to come against us. Uses, for example, news, uses social media, uses internet, all these things the enemy uses to come and do battle against us so that we feel weak, so that we lose hope, so that we do not look for God. But in that same pit that the enemy entices many persons, things to come against us, in this same pit they fall and the Lord punishes them. For example, if there's a person here, perhaps you don't hear so much of curses or witchcraft. You don't hear so much of this. They do this, but maybe in a way, maybe that's more diplomatic. But this of witchcraft and sorcery mediums, a person comes against you to hurt you. One person against another. And maybe they want an illness upon you. Oh, let cancer come upon this person and they die. The devil is there ready to hear it, to place cancer on that person. This person becomes sick, and the doctor says, oh, you have two months to live. There is the persecution that the enemy did against this person. He persecuted him using this spell or this witchcraft. He that did this witchcraft, how, as a punishment, because the Lord is going to guard and protect against this illness, and as a punishment, that better yet, the cancer comes against that person who initiated. He that went to the witch to try and do this. And he in two months will die. This is what it says here from our Lord. That they are digging pits. They dig a pit. Here's what it says in verse 6. Reread. They have prepared a net for my steps. My soul is bowed down. They have dug a pit before me. Into the midst of it, they themselves have fallen. They fell in their own evil, what they desired for the Lord and as well today. Those, the enemies that persecute, they do harm against the people, the children of God. And the Lord is a punishment. It comes against them because they fall in their own trap. So they fell in that oath that they did. He's the one that fell in illness. Because sometimes, many times, this I have seen, I have heard, I have seen the experiences in many people of the evil. That the people, we say the evil of the people, the wickedness. But it is the devil who does these things. But he uses the person. It's too bad those persons that allow the enemy to use them. But the punishment doesn't come to the devil. But the person who is allowed to be used. The person is a victim. This person did wrong against another and the, it allowed for it to return to them. And this is what it says, that they dig a pit 
and then they fall themselves into it because this is the justice of the Lord. And this is what the Lord does with his followers. Guard them, protect them, save them from all danger, from all evil. This is what our Lord does. And when here we pray, here when we come and gather as a church, we are praying and calling upon the Lord. Because there are things that happen consistently and we have to tell him so he can guard us and protect us and free us from all these dangers that come against our life. So to this is why we gather as a church to worship our Lord, to praise him and as well to place before him all petition, all need, all sadness, all illness. And we have to trust in the Lord. We have to trust in our God. Because if we do not trust in our Lord, then the Lord as well cannot work in us for being unbelieving. So the trust in the Lord as well is important. Please read verse number seven. My heart is steadfast, O God. My heart is steadfast. I will sing and give praise. This is what we should always do. It says, my heart is willing for the Lord, is steadfast, that we should be always willing to sing to the Lord as well. And eight, awake my glory, awake lute and harp, musical instruments, I will awaken the dawn, meaning I will always first the Lord, first the Lord, first remembering the Lord, meditate upon the Lord. And then later, to do the rest of the tasks, but always the Lord. Meditating upon him when he, when we open our eyes and we say, Lord, I have another day. I did not awaken with an illness, but I awoke for you, O Lord. I live, I live to do your will, O God. To praise you, to honor you, because you deserve, O Lord, this Verse 9, I will praise you, O Lord, among the peoples. I will sing to you among the nations. Oh, I will share about you among the nations. Our Lord Jesus Christ, that I will speak of you among the peoples. I will share about you among the peoples. It says sing, but more logically, will be to share, to share about the Lord, how he exists, that he is real. And our Lord Jesus says, I am going to speak of you among the nations. I'm going to praise you among those that are holy. And it is so because our Lord in spirit is with us. The Holy Spirit is with us and we sing to our Lord. And when we sing to our Lord, it is he singing to our father as well. Our Lord Jesus Christ made a promise that I will be in the congregation of the holy. I will be praising you among the nations because he entices us. Our Holy Spirit comes to us and gives us that joy to sing to him. The Holy Spirit is what has done a marvelous work among us. He is the one that is working and there among us, teaching us the way, the manner, of how to be in the presence of the Lord, how to praise and glorify him and how to be joyful and willing for our Lord. So the Holy Spirit is there with us and we thank the Lord because this verse number nine is fulfilled. I will praise you among the peoples. 10, for your mercy reaches unto the heavens and your truth unto the clouds. Yes. And to your truth unto the clouds, and your mercy reaches the heavens. 11. Be exalted, O God. Glorious is our Lord. The praise is for the King of Glory. Let us give a praise to our Lord for two minutes. Let us rise. 
Let us glorify our Lord. Blessed is the Lord. Worshipped is the Lord, our King. The glory is to you, O Lord. The honor is to you. The glory is for you. You live. You live, my Lord. You live, O Lord. Glory is the Lord. You live forevermore. You live forevermore. Great are you, O Lord, worthy of supreme worship, worthy of worship, worthy of glory. Your name be exalted forever and evermore. Alleluia. Great are you, O Lord, worthy, O Lord. Your mercy is into the infinity, O Lord. Your truth is into the affinity, O Lord, because you are great and glorious. Worthy, O oh Lord, merciful. Thank you, Lord. Thank you to the King. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, my Father. Praise the Lord. Of course, Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. All you Gentiles, all you nations, his name worship. For great is his love and his merciful kindness toward all his people and the faith of God remains forever hallelujah amen and the faithfulness of God hallelujah is forevermore praise the Lord oh praise the Lord all you Gentiles all you nations his name worship for grace his love and his merciful kindness toward all his people and the faithfulness of God remains forever hallelujah amen and the faithfulness of God hallelujah is forevermore glory to you Thanks be to the Lord. You may be seated, brothers and sisters. Let us now initiate with our questions. And we give the worship to our Lord. We ask our Lord that he manifest today. We ask our Lord that he have so much mercy on those that are ill, those that have disabilities, those with Down syndrome, those that have illnesses that do not allow them to reason that the Lord have so much mercy and do miracles and healings today. This we shall ask of our Lord. Let us now initiate with a few questions. Good afternoon, Sister Maria Luisa. Receive a very warm greeting from the Church of Montreal, Canada. Sister Maria Luisa, I would like to say that we are very happy and proud with all the triumphs that the Lord has allowed you to have in order to let the church be known. We congratulate you for your doctorate degree, beloved Dr. Maria Luisa. Thanks be to the Lord. We thank our Lord because... Just as in a matter of testimony, all that I teach in the Bible studies, because we teach values and ethics, in the Bible studies, our values there, ethics, virtues, qualities. So we did like a conclusion of this, separating the spiritual, so a thesis, with theories, teachings for a good way of living, of practicing a good life. Those persons, those in the university, they have read, they have seen and have heard everything, and they liked it. They liked it, even though they may not understand, they don't understand that truly the Lord is who gives us everything. And what we are is by the Lord. But let us say they took that part theoretically, of acting, of behaving, the good behavior. Logically, for the people of the world, it's very difficult to put into practice without God because all of that is beautiful with God because the Lord is who helps us. 
But what pleases me is that they liked that part of values, let us say, of the good path, of doing things right, of doing good before others, of serving others. And this is what I like of these persons, even though they're of the world, they value, they put on high a good life, this of qualities and virtues of a human being. This is what was beautiful, and I think the Lord is going to bless these persons for worrying or wanting to do good, good for others. Sometimes you think that people of the world are all so wrong and so evil, no one wants to do good, but it's not so. There are many people who are valuable, but they have not found the path of God. But the Lord as well, one day, will show them the path, the path to follow. Thank you, sister. Thank you. Sister Maria Luisa, my question is referring to the young people that grew up in the church. Young people that have doctrine, some have received the baptism with the Holy Spirit, and in one way or another they have begun to work and help out in the church. And this is a topic that worries us parents that have seen our children go up in the path of the Lord. The majority of us are immigrant parents that have come to a country that has a different culture in which young people at 16 or 18 years old are considered adults in a society that gives them easy access to everything that they desire. These young people, they begin to experience things that the world lives. They begin to work at a very young age and they feel very independent. They dedicate more time and energy to their job versus their studies, and they begin to lose interest in coming to church and congregating and to progress in their spiritual life. The time comes in which also they say to be in love. And even though they know that dating in the church are not is not recommended because of the scandals and the fact also that it leads to fornication, and since they are so in love, they want their significant other, who is very special, to know of the church. They think that because the Holy Spirit has spoken to them in prophecy and tells them that they are going to live many experiences in their life, it refers to experiences or pleasures of life, but not the good things that God gives us, but the pleasures that are not pleasing to the Lord. So my question is, Sister Miraliza, what should our positions be as parents in a way that we may not become those permissive parents, nor that we may become enemies with our children? Because as parents, we don't want to risk our spiritual life as the priest Eli did for being permissive for his son's sins, but also be wise as the Apostle Paul teaches to not discourage our children. Thank you very much, Sister Mary Luisa, for your response. May the Lord continue blessing you. Thank you. It is very complex, the situation we are living today regarding the family, parents, children, children, the parents, husbands, wives. It is very complex. Today, we need so much the help of our Lord. Because the norm... The human norm, everything has escaped. We can no longer control what is fashionable, what is technical, what is science, communication, internet. It is so powerful because the internet is such a powerful tool for good and for bad. For both parts, it is super powerful. So many things that we see and shall see and will happen. What we need is for the Lord to help us, to pray to the Lord and to place before the, our Lord, our children. But if in a household, the mother and father are of church, the mother and father come to church, have the spiritual gifts, they have their son or daughter, 15, 16 years old, and they want to rebel, let us say. They want to, this, as the sister says, they want to be independent. <clears throat> they each want to do what they want. If they want to be independent, meaning 
They have to be independent, but they have to pay their own rent, they have to buy their own food, and they have to pay their own things. And in this way, then they can do what they want. But you teach them the things of God. The children, you have to teach them that God lives, that God exists, and that you have to please the Lord as well and plant them the love towards God. But this love towards God is planted in the heart of these children if and when the mother and father have the Lord in their heart. Because if they do not have the Lord in their heart, what they simply come is an appearance or this mother and father come to church, simply have the appearance or I like for it to hear prophecy, but they have truly not converted to the Lord, but they simply live a displeasing life before God, a life of bad example, a bad testimony in their household. Well, that son or daughter of 16 years old is not going to respect them. They're going to say, How am I going to hear you? How am I going to obey you if you give me bad example? Meaning, if you're irresponsible, disorganized, you say obscene words, you mistreat us, how are we then going to obey you in what you say or do? As you see, brothers and sisters, it's on both parts. The parents have to educate, but so they can educate, they have to be well-mannered as well. The parents have to be well-mannered, and they themselves have to live the righteous life so that their children can see in them the good example. And when they need to correct those children who are now teenagers, when they correct them, the child will be ashamed and look at their parents and say, oh, you're right. Because you have been parents or mom or dad who have made an effort. You've made an effort for us. You've done everything for us. You've given us a good example. We have nothing to reproach you. We have nothing to say bad about you, mom or dad. But I want to enjoy with my friends. So then mom and dad pray to God. They pray to the Lord. If the Lord does not hear you quickly then perhaps the children will go. If they start to live a liberal life within the household, it is fulfilled this of parents that are submissive or are permissive. Parents cannot be permissive because then the Lord will take away the blessing. So the parents say, well, if you want to live your life, then you need to go and live your life. You need to live your own. You need to work. You need to pay your own rent. And you need to provide for yourself if you're going to live that lifestyle. You need to be independent. But in my house, you're not going to bring anybody. You have to give bad examples. You cannot do inappropriate things in this household because I will not allow it. It is this. Pure prayer, brothers and sisters, wisdom, intelligence, strategies. This is what we should have to be able to manage these situations. Because the household is in path of spiritual growth, in path of change. What will we say of those that are new, who arrive with their children pre-adolescence? What can we say? Nothing we can require from them. Because they come in a disorderly life in every aspect. Until the Lord does the miracle. Until this person converts. And if these children... They are in the world living their life. We can do nothing except pray and give them to the Lord in prayer. But trusting that one day they will come and surely they will return when they tire of enjoying and exploring the world. They tire and return. But patience, prayer, wisdom, and intelligence. If the parents, as I say, are rude and not well-mannered, what can they require from their children? So we have to pray and say, Lord, have mercy of me as a mother or father and have mercy of my child who's being rebellious. But all we can do is pray and and ask of the Lord. Ask of our Lord, praying, do not anguish parents with your children. If the Lord has a plan with them, it will be. The change shall be. Let us continue. Let us continue. Soyez les bienvenus, Sœur Marie-Louise, à vous et votre délégation. Sœur Marie-Louise, nous vous recevons avec beaucoup d'affection 
Et nous nous sentons honorés de vous avoir ici, parce que vous êtes la porte et prophétesse de Dieu. Nous sommes joyeux que vous nous enseignez et que vous nous guidez dans ce merveilleux chemin. Ma question a à voir avec le livre de l'Apocalypse, chapitre 1, du verset 17 au verset 18. Sister Maria Luisa, we welcome you with great affection to Montreal. We feel honored to have our apostle and prophetess here teaching us. I have a question, if you allow me, in the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verses 17 and 18. Quand je le vis, je tombé à ses pieds comme mort. Il posa sur moi sa main droite en disant, « Ne crains point, je suis le premier et le dernier, et le vivant. J'étais mort, et voici je suis vivant au siècle des siècles. Je tiens les clés de la mort et du séjour des morts. » Sœur Maraluisa, j'aimerais que vous nous expliquiez quelles implications ou conséquences a le fait que le Seigneur a les clés de la mort et du séjour des morts. Est-ce que ce verset s'accomplit au moment de notre mort, lorsque nous, sommes, lorsque nous nous présentons devant le tribunal de Christ pour être jugés, sachant que le Seigneur a l'autorité pour nous donner le salut ou pour nous condamner en tenant compte de nos œuvres Ou alors ce verset se réfère au fait que le Seigneur, une fois mort, était parti prêcher aux esprits en prison, comme il est écrit dans 1 Pierre, chapitre 3, verset 19 Verse 17 states, And when I saw him, I fell that his feet is dead. But he laid his right hand on me, saying to me, Do not be afraid, I am the first and the last. 18. I am he who lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of Hades and of death. I would like you to explain to us what implication does it have the fact that the Lord has the keys of death and of Hades. This verse is fulfilled after we die when we present ourselves before the judging seat of Christ to be judged. And the Lord Jesus has the authority to grant us salvation and condemnation according to our works. Or is it talking about when the Lord Jesus died and he went and preached to the spirits in prison and Hades as it is written in 1 Peter chapter number 3 verse 19. That is the question of this brother sister. This verse gives us the understanding that Jesus Christ has power. Power to good and evil. He has power. The evil does not come without the, the will of the Lord. The Lord gives permission to the devil to do the evil. If the Lord does not give permission to the devil, he cannot do anything. Meaning that in the hand of God, and here specifically the Lord Jesus Christ is the son of God, that in his hands or in his power, is good and evil. He has the power upon the good and the bad. When you say that the Lord was preaching to the spirits that were imprisoned, these spirits were not in hell. They were in a place that was specific and the Lord Christ went and preached to them. But better yet, the first comparison the brother made was valid. That yes, the Lord has power of resurrect. He resurrected, died, and resurrected. He had power upon life and upon death. He has power upon good and evil. He has power. Here it says upon death and Hades, upon evil. He is the one that has the power of all these things. He has the keys and allows the devil to do what he wants for the punishment of mankind. Because this is why it was well the Lord allowed for this being to exist, to test mankind for as well there to be a balance and for as well the people to make decisions and to do things by their own will and not do anything forced 
because someone forced them, but because they want and desire, as is the case of for us to choose the path of looking for God. Other persons, we know that in the world there are persons that worship the devil. They go behind and they honor him and praise and do service to the devil. So we see how the Lord allowed this type of freedom so that each one can make their own decision. But the power of all is of the Lord. And the hand of God is of doing good or doing bad. It is this. Let us continue forward. Another question. Sister Mary Luisa, receive a cordial greeting on behalf of the churches in downtown Quebec. We love you in an inexpressible way in the Lord. Sister, I have two questions or situations related to the book of Romans, chapter 1, verses 26 through 29. Romans, chapter 1, verse 26. From verse 26 through 29. Yes, Romans 1, verse 26 through 29. And it states as follows. Can I read it, sister? Yes, brother, yes. For this reason, God gave them up to vile passions. For even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust for one another, men with men committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error which was due. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. They are whisperers. Sister, in a context as the Canadian context, which promotes freedom of sexual orientation, according to what I have learned in the doctrine through these years, I have understood that those are evil spirits, which I think are very powerful because they take male behaviors and men behave with female gestures. I have some questions, sister. By being such powerful spirits, how should the person who is aware and wants to change pray and rebuke the spirits and at what point the person can the person realize that he or she is free and it is no longer happening, lest the spirit find refuge and the person have a bisexual tendency as it is happening, this phenomenon, which is a trend worldwide? That is the first part of my question, sister. Well, brother, it is very sad what has occurred to us as mankind because of the disobedience of Adam and Eve. Since Adam and Eve, mankind has separated from the Lord, and they began to sin and sin and sin, and the devil, who is our enemy, who taught man to sin and to do so many things, to do the contrary of God. Then comes the flood, and the Lord destroys those people, and they all die. <clears throat> Only one family is there. The earth again is populated, and again the same occurs. Then comes Moses and the commandments of God, the rules, the way in which the Lord teaches that man should not do this or that, the commandments, all the Lord teaching. But mankind continues to grow and grow, and the same thing, they separate from God. Because the devil, since he wants to do the contrary of the Lord, enters into the hearts of each man and woman, and they become rebellious, stubborn, disobedient. And they become sinners. And this is what has occurred. The Lord, our God, always teaching, as well, our Lord Christ teaching his word, cleansing the people, transforming lives, our Lord Jesus Christ doing a, a task in the preaching of the gospel, 
the Holy Spirit on the other side as well, doing his task of converting the souls, of removing all of this from the heart of the people that has come from many years since Adam and Eve. All of these sins have come forth. All of these faults, all of these mistakes, all of this has come since Adam and Eve. So here, the Apostle Paul was giving this count that always the fault of man has come because they have disveered from the path. And when they removed from the path of the Lord, the Lord gave them over. The Lord gave them over to evil for they to do what was wrong and to do all of these shameful acts and to do all these things. Not only that, but as well comes drunkenness, comes murder, kidnapping, all these types of sins, thieves, robbery, vengeance, greediness, hate, all of these types of sins flow forth as well. All these sins are before the Lord. Because you see in verse 30 and 31, all of the sins that as well flow forth that man began to do because the Lord gave them over to do this because the Lord was tired. But with the gospel of the Lord, he said, I'm going to rescue many people because there will be many who I'm going to transform, I'm going to cleanse them, and I'm going to remove that wickedness, and they're going to follow me. And this is what the Lord is doing today with his gospel. So many persons come with different types of sins, some with homosexuality, other with being a lesbian, others who are greedy, others who are negative, others who have revenge, and the Lord does a change in the person because the Lord says that many are called and few are chosen, but this the Lord knows. But we all with the desire that we are saved and here we all gather together for the Lord to help us. So the Lord begins to do a miracle in each heart, in each life. And many persons have come. This of cancer, for example, are things that the Lord allowed on the people as a punishment because of sin that the, they separated from the Lord. So the Lord sent an illness. So this way he sent incurable diseases. And many times it falls upon a person who's innocent, a person who is just and innocent. It fell upon them. This punishment of cancer, for example. So this person was not at fault of the sins of their ancestors. But since the curses were there, it fell upon them and that they became sick of cancer. And now what they have to do, call upon the Lord, pray to the Lord, be willing for the Lord. And the Lord does the miracle. And the Lord will cleanse and remove the cancer just as he will do so for he that's homosexual. Cleanse and remove. The Lord does all these things. Simply the person has to be willing and believe. Because if the person doesn't believe, then the Lord cannot do anything for them. But if the person believes and wants and says, Lord, I want for you to change me. I want for you to remove this because it makes me unhappy. Do not think that these persons who have these tendencies, do not think that they are happy. They are the person's most unhappy. So they show the appearance and they have this camouflage, but they are unhappy. This is a reason that we help them to pray to the Lord and ask the Lord for them, for their happiness. Lord, have mercy upon this person who is not happy. They are not happy with their behavior, with what they are in this moment. And they are coming to church. Deliver, O oh Lord. Do the miracle. Help them, O oh Lord. Because we want, we all want happiness. Because one thing is to have money or be rich and to have so many possessions that is different than to be happy. Happiness is not reached with money or with any position. None of those things. No rank or level. None of that is reached with money. But with the peace that God gives, the joy is given by the Lord. So we want to be happy. And in this way, we want these persons as well to have happiness. And when they have the opportunity, if they come to church, even more to pray, lay hands, ask the Lord to deliver and that you be happy just as I am happy in the Lord, you as well be happy in your life. So we 
are not going to go against anyone or we're not going to discriminate against anyone. Better yet, we're going to be merciful and consider everyone. We as well are not going to criticize the governments because the government, what they do is try to do good for these persons who have been discriminated against. So try to imagine and think someone who is discriminated against and they say, you are not going to work here in my job. Someone like you cannot work in my office. I can't have you. And everyone does the same. So this person, what are they going to live? How are they going to live? They're going to beg or what? Or they're going to steal? Or they're going to steal? Or they're going to beg? Or they're going to prostitute themselves because they have to eat? So what the government is doing is avoiding these situations. The government, what they do is avoid that these persons who are discriminated against in the antiquity, they were discriminated by society, by families, by their, by loved ones, that these persons become delinquents. The government does not want this. The government says that there should be justice for all. It's a human being that as well, they have rights. We have to give them rights. But the Lord in his mercy has changed the rules, has changed the hearts in the way of thinking of the people, of the towns, of the cities. And this is why we do not need to criticize the government. They are doing this in their human way to help these persons that they be able to work and that they have a space in society and work and evolve and they can live. But we as a church... We need to have mercy and love and affection and pray for the people. Ask the Lord that he give me power, that he give me support, and that my prayer has power and that my prayer has support. Look at these persons, O Lord, have mercy upon them. We know that all of this comes from the curses of the antiquity, that the people separated from the path of the Lord and they began to sin and you allowed this. But surely all these persons are even innocent and don't know why they're living this situation. This is the way that we think. And this is how we need to act and proceed. Very well. Let us ask the Lord for mercy. We're going to ask the Lord mercy. You may rise, brothers and sisters, that the Lord have so much mercy and help us to be able to be there in his presence. That we be persons that are good. Persons that love our Lord, our God. This is our only desire, our only want. And we thank the Lord for having made us understand and knowledgeable to be able to give these reasonings. And that we be able to choose and feel and desire and want to choose looking at the good and be able to distinguish between good and evil. And we thank our Lord that he made us persons that reason very well. So here we are before the Lord to continue forward and to tell the Lord that here we are and that he take us by the hand always. And let us now pray our prayer of petitions, needs, illnesses, and as well to dismiss the brothers and sisters those that have to travel to different cities, we're going to ask our Lord blessings, that he guard us, that he never abandon us, that he take us by the hand always because we love him. We love him. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, Holy Father, thank you, Lord. Before your presence, we are in this moment. We have meditated upon your word. We have spoken and we have said perhaps we are children, O oh Lord, in our way of thinking, in our way of speaking. But we do know, O oh Lord, and think and believe that you are a God of power, that you are a marvelous, great and marvelous person, wondrous, that is in all places of the universe. That your power is so great, your presence is so great. In every place of the universe, you are there, O oh Lord. And that we cannot comprehend, we cannot understand your greatness. We cannot, O oh Lord, meditate of how great you are, how you are, O oh God. Simply, we have a very reduced mind, a very small reasoning, O oh Lord. But with this small reasoning that you have given us, 
We want to give you the glory, the honor, the praise. We want to admire you, O oh Lord. We want to tell you that we love you and that we want to continue in the path of goodness. We want to do what is right and just. We want, O oh Lord, to obey you. We want to do your will. Allow us, O oh Lord, that we may change, that we may be transformed. And that we may be men and women who are righteous before you, that do your will, and that you always, that we may be in your presence, that our prayers reach your presence. Allow us, O oh Lord, help us, O oh Lord, to be able to reach these things. Each time we present ourselves before you, you hear us and you extend your hand of power upon us. You place your hand of power upon our heads and you bless us. Bless everyone, O oh Lord, with your hand of power. Bless them. Look, O oh Lord, what is impossible for man to be able to have access to all the persons to lay hands, to pray for them, to give them prophecy, comfort. It is impossible, my Lord, but for you it is not because you are a God that is great and you can, O oh Lord, to each one, give them that laying on of hands, give them an embrace to each one, O oh Lord, redress them with the power from on high, with the power of your Holy Spirit to each one. You give the spiritual gifts that you give the baptism with the Holy Spirit, those who have not yet received, that you extend your hand and be healing the physical bodies healing O oh Lord rebuke and cast out evil spirits of illness the curses the spells the witchcraft be removed rebuke all evil spirit of illness cast out all power from the enemy all power of the devil all envy of the devil against your children Lord extend your hand of power and do miracles and signs deliver each one O oh Lord break the chains break shackles, remove the bondage, remove all trap from the enemy, destroy the work of the enemy. Break, O oh Lord, every trap of the enemy, every power of the enemy, and remove, O oh Lord, every stain and redress them all with the power of your grace. Dress them with the power of your Holy Spirit and send power from on high upon each one, O oh Lord and give them joy in spiritual jubilance, and that each one, O oh Lord, be joy and happiness, and be joyous in the spirit, and they may praise you and glorify you, and that each one may have beautiful words to tell you, words of worship, because you are worthy, my Lord, of our glory and praise. Blessed and exalted is your name forevermore. We praise you, O oh God. We worship you, O oh Lord. Extend your hand, do miracles and signs. Look at those that are in bondage by the enemy. Look at those that are in chains, those that are full of illnesses that it cannot reason, those that have problems in their brain, O oh Lord. Let it be extending your hand, doing a miracle, healing, cleansing, delivering, O oh Lord. Let it be you removing all these things, O oh Lord. Remember, O oh Lord, remember them, O oh Lord. You promised that you would heal the sick, that you would do marvels, that you would manifest with miracles, with wonders. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you, my heavenly Father. Blessed and exalted is your name. Blessed is your name forevermore, O Lord. Thank you, heavenly Father, forevermore. Gracious is your name. Worshiped is your name. Glorious is the King of kings and Lord of hosts. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you, my Father, heavenly Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy, for your love, for your power and your word. Thank you, hallelujah. Glory to you, my Lord. Glory to you. Thank you, Lord. Blessed is the Lord. Chorus 119, Every Day with Jesus. Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Every day with Jesus, I love him more and more. He saves me and keeps me. He is the one I'm living for. Every day with Jesus 
is sweeter than the day before. Every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Every day with Jesus, I love Him more and more. He saves me and keeps me. He is the one I'm living for. Every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Blessed and exalted is the name of our Lord. The glory and the honor is for the Lord. A great blessing for all of you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord fulfill your desires and your wants. May the Lord do many miracles in your life. And may the Lord support you greatly every time that you speak of the word of the Lord. Great blessings for all of you, my beloved brothers and sisters. Thank you once more. May the Lord bless you. And until the next time, God bless you.